Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to all and welcome to eBranch with Mendaki 2021 Parents as First Teachers Nurturing Lifelong Learners in Your Child. I'm Zaza Majid and I will be your MC and moderator for today. We want to expand our reach to the community, especially our parents with young children who can benefit from our sharing today. The focus for today's discussion is, amongst others, to learn the importance of early childhood education, to build strong foundations in our children, and of course, to prepare for your child for primary school. Madam Aida is a senior Malay teacher in a primary school and a representative from the Singapore Malay Teachers Union or KGMS. Welcome, Madam Aida. Thank you, uh, Ms. Zaza. How are you, Madam Aida? Uh, doing well. Yeah, Thank I you. look forward to your sharing today. Right, that's yeah? great. So, um, the P1 registration exercise uh, recently began online for children born between 2 January 2015 and 1 January 2016. And I'm sure there are many parents out there who are so worried uh, with their child entering primary school. I myself faced this uh, three years ago. I know how worried the parent can be and I know you have prepared something to share with the parents uh, who might uh, find this journey daunting for them. So, whenever you are ready, take it away. Thank you, Ms. Jaja Majid. A very good morning to Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Faisal, <coughs> Ms. Noura J, and all parents who have made time amidst your busy schedule this morning to be with us here. I am Madam Aida Hosni, your invited guest speaker for today. It is heartening to see uh, all, of us, all of you here today, right? Mm, I'm, I certainly hope that we will find today's session fruitful and discuss and share together with regard to parents as first teachers nurturing lifelong learners in your child. Today I will be sharing three key sharing points, the importance of uh, early childhood education, nurturing positive learning habits and getting your child ready for school. It is apt now for me to share about the importance of early childhood education so that we are able to understand better why it is important for us to send our children to school as early as possible. So why is early childhood education important? Firstly, it is important as it provides a holistic development for the child. To be a wholesome individual, a child needs to be developed not only mentally but physically, emotionally and socially. Every aspect of the child should be recognised and valued in order to maximise the potential of the child and for the child to function effectively in the real world. Secondly, it helps the child to develop his or her learning disposition. So what is learning disposition? Learning disposition is the way in which learners engage in and relate to the learning process. Learning disposition affects how child approaches learning and therefore, the outcomes of his or her learning. Some examples of learning disposition are courage and curiosity, playfulness, trust, perseverance uh, by not giving up uh, when they are faced with difficulty, confidence and responsibility. Thirdly, to develop good foundation in literacy and numeracy as we are all very familiar with. When we send our children to school, Early, We are giving them the opportunity to start their learning journey early. The development of a child in the early years is crucial as this is the time children inquire, explore and discover the world around them. They are curious about the things around them. Therefore, we have to provide them the right environment and structures for them to learn. Lastly, Sending them to school helps to build the child's confidence and learn social skills. Children have to be equipped with confidence and acquire social skills to survive in the context of the unknown future. That said, the skills need to be developed as early as possible so that they become confident individuals. In summary, we know that children need the right environment to learn all the various skills and dispositions. The learning dispositions they learn will stay with them throughout their lives. Children who are confident and eager to learn are ready for the next stage of their learning and are more likely to do well in school. 
Therefore, the best place for children to learn is in school. And next, I will be moving on to share nurturing positive learning habits. Parents play an important role in a child's learning as parents are the first individuals who spend the most time with the child in their early years. When the child is given the right support, they can start learning at a very young age. As you see in the picture, setting simple routines regularly for children is important to build security and stability. Young children gain an understanding of everyday events and procedures and learn what is expected of them as routines make their environment more predictable. Daily routines may include packing of their bags, time to get ready in the morning, bath times, play time, family time, and outdoor play. What you see is an example of a reading routine. Reading can be done both at home and or at the library in an informal setting to create the comfort for the child. The child will then build interest and motivation to read. From the video, oops, sorry. All right, let us now watch a video. Hari ini hari jadi awi dan syasha mereka berumur tujuh, tujuh tahun. From this video, you can see that this four-year-old child has built the confidence to read independently. However, this does not mean that every four-year-old child should be able to read like this. What it simply means is when the child is accustomed to the daily reading routine set for her, she will be motivated to read regularly and this translates into her ability to read eventually. And parents, please do remember that our children should not only know how to read or speak in English as they will also be learning their mother tongue language. So they should be exposed to the mother tongue language and should start learning to converse and read in mother tongue language too. This is another example of how you can nurture positive learning habits at home. If you observe from the pictures, the child was literally writing, drawing, and colouring on a pasted mahjong paper, which is on the wall. This is a creative way to encourage the child to write, draw, and colour freely. Once the child has developed the fine motor skills of holding a pencil and writing, then she can start writing on a normal size book or paper. Why is this? Because then they will be more confident as they have acquired the skills of writing the strokes of the letters and holding the pencil correctly. Let us watch another video. You can also get them to write on a mini whiteboard as it is easy to erase and you save on paper. You see from the video that this child is confidently and independently writing on her own. This shows that she is already accustomed to the writing routine that has been taught to her. And she erases the mistakes that she has made and independently corrected the strokes that she uh, didn't write correctly just now. Yeah, so notice also how she holds the whiteboard marker. The child will get used to holding the marker or pencil correctly if we train them from young, right? By the time they get to primary school, they will be able to write beautifully and hold the pencil and uh, smoothen the process of writing at school, right? Setting routines can help establish expectations. Children begin to expect and complete activities without issue and we as parents become the partner and not someone who tells them what to do. It also creates a calmer household because not only the child, but the family members also know what to expect. 
Hence, minimizing stress and anxiety. It also gives the child confidence and independence. With a routine, a child will learn over time when it is time for them to clean, when it is time for them to pack their bags. So they will take pride in what they're doing and what they're supposed to do by themselves rather than always being told what to do. When children feel empowered and independent, they are less likely to rebel or retaliate. And of course, it establishes healthy, constructive habits from brushing their teeth regularly to completing homework every afternoon. And routines help establish these constructive habits. Children who practice these skills will be able to manage their time better. As they age, they will have more self-discipline in terms of healthy grooming and eating habits along with studying and cleaning their rooms. Remember, these routines are not confined to just reading and writing. Know your child's interests. Engage them in activities which they like. It can be painting, it can be drawing, and it can be just watching a television. Yeah? Strike a balance so that they get to do various activities to allow them to develop mentally, physically, emotionally, and socially. Let's take a look at this video. Hold the brush. Correctly. Other activities may include baking, helping in the kitchen, and playing games or sports. These activities can be part of that routine that they do regularly. It is also important for children to have a conducive environment for learning at home. This also includes their basic needs for a proper bed to sleep. It is good to create a cozy corner where they can read or do any free and easy activities like relaxing or playing with their favourite toy. Children also need a proper table and chair so that they can be trained to sit with the correct posture comfortably when doing written work. This helps them to focus and get their work done comfortably. Creating a conducive environment does not only mean creating the physical setting. It also includes providing them a, prov uh, a positive environment through affirmation, giving positive feedback and ensuring that the noise level in the house is not a distraction. We also can encourage our child in play and problem solving always giving them affirmation for their effort. A little praise goes a long way. They feel their self-worth and work towards achieving more and improving themselves. And when we provide the specific feedback to them, it helps them to act on the feedback because they are clear what needs to be improved. For example, instead of saying just good job, you can specifically say, I like how you hold your pencil with with, uh, on, with the tip of your fingers, it made you write the strokes nicely. Yeah, so they, they know clearly that what they do is right and they will continue doing it right and they feel enriched. And we can get them uh, to do, um, to think about uh, how they can make things better when they are faced with problems. It is, it is natural that we always want to, want to give us the solution immediately when the child is faced with a problem. But what we can do is get them to think and go through the thinking process with them and solve the problem collaboratively. Think of a solution together with them so that we can train them to think out of the box and create a good, uh, positive relationship with our children. And yes, a little encouragement goes a long way. You never know that little encouragement you give your child actually motivates him or her and acts as a catalyst to reach his or her potential. Here are some tips and strategies that parents uh, can do to prepare your child uh, getting into the primary school. Create opportunities for them to communicate, interact and build relationships with others. 
This is very important because when they uh, transit into a new environment, it will prepare them to meet new people, to meet new teachers and to adapt to the new, a new environment. And as parents, we should also keep abreast of the primary school education system yeah, so that we have knowledge of what's going on and we can make the uh, due uh, uh, decision as to what we can do for the child. And of course, as a family, logistically and financially, we have to prepare ourselves because um, where we send our child in terms of the distance, in terms of the uh, after-school care, it is important to know and how, uh, what are the financial um, um, commitment that we have to put when we put our child into a primary school. And importantly, we need to talk to the child with regard to the change and transition from preschool to primary school. Uh, from preschool to primary school. It, uh, do not brush away uh, what, what they say. It is good to listen and hear them out and allay their fears and find out exactly what is it they are afraid of so that they are more assured, they feel more assured. And it's also good to attend the primary school's open house, which will be conducted uh, towards the uh, fourth, fourth quarter of the year so that you are aware of what the schools that you are interested in to send your child offers. All right, um, with that, um, I'll be looking forward um, to have a more fulfilling um, discuss a discussion session later with you with regard to any of the issues uh, that you all face, right? And I will leave with this um, quote from Susan Wright, when we nurture a child's whole being, we open doors to endless possibilities. I'll see you later. Thank you. Wow, uh, thank you Madam Aida for that very insightful sharing of how we as parents can learn, build and prepare. And this brings us to the second keyword which is build. There's one more keyword to go so stay tuned to find out. And for our viewers at home, if you have any questions, feel free to post them on the Zoom chat box or Facebook comments. Meanwhile, let's welcome Miss Nora J, who is joining us joining us live from home. Ms. Nora Jay is a TV personality, a property agent, and a business owner with three beautiful children, two of whom are of preschool age. So let's welcome Nora Jay. Nora, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah I'm good. How are you, Zaza? How yeah. are you, Aida? We are, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, as we know, Nora, you wear multiple hats as a mother. You juggle your work, your business, your family. And uh, based on your experience as a mom to three wonderful children and uh, two, two preschool age, yeah? That's right, yeah, two how, preschoolers. Yeah, how do you ensure that your child has a good start in education? Okay, um, first and foremost, I, I again, I stand firm that the parents ourselves, we are our children's first teachers. So the learning, be it academics or discipline or the moral values need to start from home. Eh? So, and because I wear the multiple hats, Zaza, this is why all the more it's more important to send my children to school. <laughs> because I want the active learning to take place. I mean, I have a helper and Alhamdulillah, I also have the support from my parents and my in-law. You know, the grandparents can look after. Yep. But yep. then it is not their responsibility. And also, I mean, I question the learning at home. Um you know, watching the, the screen time. Yes. Uh, and if I and I cannot I cannot be very imposing on my parents or even my helper because their job is not to raise my child. Yeah, I so, agree. Yeah, I so agree. I yeah. So and that's I why think I most mm. of us most of us face face that I would say challenge yeah, when um, we put our children in the care of others. We can't have full control and at the same time we cannot impose that on, on our mothers, on our helpers and all that. So, what, what are some of your challenges when it comes to that? I think um, my ultimate challenge will be, because they are very young, um, then the school refusal sets in. Mm. So, it's only natural that they will feel very anxious, very nervous. But this is something where as parents, 
I don't have a choice kan yeah, I yeah. need to send you to school so I cannot mirror their feelings I acknowledge the feelings but I will you know you have to listen to your children and this is when I go to the library and borrow books on going to school mm-hmm. You know, like you go to school, it's it's all about you know making friends, taking turns. Yeah, some days will be bad, and and then I will also, you know, try to 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 talk to them like an like an adult lah. Yeah. Like yeah. even at work, sometimes I feel nervous, mm-hmm. but you know, sometimes you just have to show up. Yeah. 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 So I think communication is key, and uh, like I said, um, the formative years of a child. From one all the way to seven, you know, the the active learning, the quality learning needs to take place, mm-hmm. and it's none other than school. If yeah. you are a working parent, if Definitely. you are a stay home parent, by all means. But because most of us come from dual income families, so this is when and 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 the local and our our the apa, uh, there are so many uh, good preschools around. Yes. We're talking about. All, all across the board. Yep. And it's affordable. Yeah. So, so why don't why shortchange your children? Yes, definitely. Uh and and I like that two points that I can uh emphasize here. It's about sure. connecting and also communicating. If I could yeah. share my experience also, my girls took three long months. Yeah, it was the longest uh, three months of my life getting used to primary school when they transition yeah. from uh, preschool to primary school so what i what i did then uh, was to ask them every night what are their concerns what are their fears and that actually helped them to eventually settle in so uh, oh, nora nice. what are some of your tips uh, that you can share with us to enhance learning uh, in our children oh, man. Yeah. You know, Zaza, I'm no as expert parent. I'm still learning every day, despite being a mother of three. Um, because one is every child is different, so you have to apply different parenting skills. But what's most most important will be, of course, to to show that love and affection. Because when we nurture our children with unconditional love and giving them that emotional support, then that's when they are able to express their thoughts and feelings. So the communication at home needs to be very solid in that sense. And because whatever it is, our aim is to foster that healthy relationship between a parent and a child. And um, another another tip will be, of course, discipline is necessary. You know, when we send them to school, we need to make sure that we partner with the schools in terms of discipline. So discipline starts from home. We cannot be dependent on the teachers to do that. But we establish a very good, a positive relationship with the teacher. Definitely. So I think that's that's another important um, key, last Because you know, going to school is like going to work. Though you're talking about a constant in their life. Yeah. So that constant better be a positive experience, lah. So yes. like, listen to your child. For example, if he's always crying and despite whatever, you need to listen. If you have to change school, be it change as many as you can until your child is. Uh, feels very safe in the environment. Definitely, yeah, and uh, it's also very important for for us to ensure that emotionally they are yeah. in control in that sense, yeah, because that that's the most important thing, their emotions. You're yeah, thank right. you, uh, Nora, for that insightful sharing as well, and of course, uh, Madam Aida also for sharing with us.